An architect is hired by a resort to design and build two sinusoidal opening channels for water to come out of a concrete block and pour into a pool below as two waterfalls. The owners of the resort want the two openings, which are next to each other, to each look like the top halves of sine curves. They also want a total of one liter of water to come out of the two openings every second. They want the water to flow at a constant speed of 20 centimeters per second in order to look good when the water pours down into the pool below. Not too fast and not too slow. The concrete block that the two water channels will be carved into is five centimeters tall and one centimeter at the top of the block above the openings must remain untouched for the sake of structural integrity. What equation can the architect use to model these channels? In order to start, I collected everything that the question gives us up front. One liter of water per second means that per tunnel, we need 0.5 liters to come out every second. We know that the horizontal movement out of the tunnel is at 20 centimeters a second, and that the amplitude of the sine wave used to model the openings is four, because we need to leave one out of every five centimeters of concrete at the top untouched for the sake of structural integrity. Using this information, we can begin to solve the problem. Before I show how I did it, I encourage everyone watching to begin to think about how you would approach such a problem. Me personally, I began by using the information we had to construct a model of one second's worth of water. One liter is 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters. I can set this to be 10 by 10 by 5 for a half liter, and since I know that 20 centimeters of water passes through the tunnel at any given time, I can create a model that looks like a re rectangular prism with the dimensions 20 by 5 by 5 or 20 by 25. This also means that a similar model would work for a sinusoidal volume. I created this model to demonstrate the target area that the area under the final sine wave must have. Since we know the target area of the opening is 25 square centimeters, I used calculus to find the right shape for one of the sine wave shaped openings. We know that the amplitude of the curve is 4 centimeters, and that the target integral size is 25 square centimeters, meaning all we need now is to be able to modify the period, which affects the width of the curve, and therefore the area. In the parent form y equals a sine of bx, the period of the curve is pi over b. Using this, we can set ourselves an equation for what we want to use. This equation is the integral from 0 to pi over b of 4 sine bx dx equals 25. We can solve this for b once we acknowledge that the integral from 0 to pi sine of x dx equals 2. This can be proven through gradual approximation in which we start with a triangle under the sine wave which has an area of 1.571 and gradually add more shapes underneath as shown here. The closer we get to an infinite number of shapes under the wave, the closer we get to a total value of 2. We need to modify the basic equation to change the result from 2 to 25, which can be achieved by multiplying by 25 over 2. This means that b, when the amplitude is 1, is the reciprocal of 25 over 2, or 2 over 25. The basis for this reciprocal is the rule for affecting the period of a sinusoid. To give an example of this rule, sine of 1 half x has a period that is twice as large as the period of sine of x. In other words, if we want to increase the period, therefore increasing the area, we need to multiply by a number less than 1. The integral from 0 to 25 pi over 2a of a sine the quantity 2a over 25x dx equals 25 is our new formula for any amplitude a, which in this case needs to be 4. Using this general formula, we can come up with a final answer. The integral from 0 to 25 pi over 8 of 4 sine the quantity 8 over 25x dx equals 25 meaning the equation is y equals 4 sine 8 over 25x. This equation is what the architect will use to model the openings of the tunnels. 
As another method of solving this problem, I decided to use the left and right rectangular approximation methods, varying the number of rectangles I use. The results are on the screen now. As expected, the data became ever more accurate as the number of rectangles increased. In conclusion, I showed my result for this problem using an equation, a graph, and the numerical results from LRAM and RRAM testing. The architect now knows what he can use to model the equation properly, and he can complete his work.